Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As we, in the General Assembly, get the honor once every decade to cast a vote on congressional redistricting. It is one of the most significant responsibilities before us as members of this august body. And it goes back in history to the founding of this country. For me, and I hope for each and every one of you, this historic opportunity and responsibility has made you think not only about our obligations here, but about a system of federalism that has been set up in the United States by the great founders of this country. I know I, for one, am excited and proud to be able to vote yes for this once in a decade plan. And I think this plan clearly meets constitutional and statutory obligations to reflect one person, one vote, and to send our congressional representatives to Washington, D.C. I've heard mention of some parochial interests, such as the Lehigh Valley, and I understand that one of the factors is community of interest. But to indicate that a particular region is not still a particular region because of congressional lines is missing the point. The fact of the matter is the Lehigh Valley is still the Lehigh Valley and the fact that it can have two congressional representatives to make mention of the importance of issues is important as well. All areas of this state geographically have to be covered by a congressional district and it has to be down to one person, one vote as set forth by the United States Constitution and as modified, modified by the 14th Amendment and as interpreted under the United States Supreme Court case of Veef. Now how does this particular map meet our constitutional and statutory duty in sending 18 representatives to the United States Congress? In the first instance, the population of the Commonwealth is now 12 million 702,379 individuals based on the U.S. Census. And while this reflects a population growth of approximately 3.43% in the last 10 years, Pennsylvania did not grow as fast as a number of other states. As a result, unfortunately, during this congressional reapportionment, the Commonwealth lost a congressional seat and we are going from 19 to 18 to cover those 12,702,379 citizens in 67 counties. In addition to the increase in population, which did not keep pace with other states, there has been a significant shift of the population center overall from west to the east. And this growth and shift has substantially reconfigured the concentration of population in the Commonwealth. In drawing new maps, we had to reflect the loss of a seat and the population shifts. Now by region, and I am from the Southwest, by region, the Southwest lost a minus 3% in population. The Northwest lost 
a minus 2% in population, and the other, six, other four of six regions gained in population. Thus, some of those seats are, by definition, have to be reconfigured to meet the population shifts. The reduction of a seat or the loss of a seat came from the Southwest because, in fact, that's where the population loss on a percentage basis occurred at a most significant number. One of the congressmen, in fact, sent a letter to House Democrats, an incumbent, where the seat has been combined, and said that he wanted to make clear that he believes that all Western Pennsylvania districts, including the new 12th, are drawn in a fair and contiguous way. And now at the conclusion of such a long and contentious process, the public has a right to know what their final district will look like. And I see no benefit to the public of further delay in the process, and therefore respectfully ask for the support of the House members of the new map as drawn. Quote, unquote. The fact of the map matter is, this map is absolutely one person, one vote. 705,687 in five districts and 705,688 in 13 districts. It is compliant with the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, the 14th Amendment, and the standards set by the United States Supreme Court in the Veith case, which was a case looking at a Pennsylvania map. In addition, this particular map clearly represented the population shifts that occurred over the last decade. Both in terms of where the lost seat came from and in terms of reconfiguring other seats to reflect new population growth or population loss. It is clearly in compliance with the Voting Rights Act. And that was certainly a test that was taken when looking at all of the seats across the state of Pennsylvania. It is clear that it could support a majority-minority seat in the Southeast and that that majority-minority seat needed to stay intact. In terms of splits, this particular map only splits 29 counties versus the 39 percent increase under the amendment offered by our good colleague from Clinton County. It also had less municipal splits and it passed a number of compactness tests over the competing version offered by the good gentleman on the other side of the aisle from Clinton County. Let's be clear also, politics may be taken into account as a factor, although not the controlling factor, and it is clear that we need to look at communities of interest, compactness, contiguity, Voting Rights Act, population shifts first and foremost, one person, one vote. Every single one of those factors was taken into account when drawing the 18 congressional districts in this map for our state. And we do have an obligation, all of us, to look at the macro map for the state in addition to checking in on the local area. But in looking at this map and in deciding to vote affirmatively, as I would suggest, you cannot merely look at this parochially. You must absolute, 
absolutely look at the map as, as a whole because that is your obligation. It is your duty. And it is part of the opportunity to participate in history to know that you, as a legislator, speak to the entire state and have a responsibility to the entire state in this process in addition to any local concerns that might come up. You must understand that each of the issues and standards that have been set forth by the Supreme Court in previous decisions have been taken into account and that we have delivered a constitutional statutory map that absolutely respects the principle of one person, one vote. I would ask each and every one of you to recognize those obligations. I would ask you to understand that by voting yes in particular, you are saying that you have participated in, in making into law what our founding fathers gave us the opportunity to do. Please vote yes.